bike's creaking a bit. <laughs> so I'm not sure what's worse. A pill or downhill? Oh, my legs feel like they're going so slow. Genuinely not sure I'm gonna get up. Now I've been set a challenge. It might sound simple, and simple it may be, but I reckon this is gonna be one of my hardest challenges yet. The team at GCN have sent me a budget of a hundred pounds, and not a hundred pounds to spend on a pair of new shoes, but a bike. Yes, a bike. But the shopping bit's only half of it. I have to ride a hundred miles on this hundred pound bike, and this is my bike. place I'm gonna to look to try and find my bike is on eBay, Gumtree and Facebook Marketplace and places like that and see what I come across. After not much luck on the internet I was running out of options but I had a eureka moment. I remember passing this house that had loads of bikes for sale outside so I decided to pay a visit. So I'm looking for a bike to do 100 miles on and I need it for 100 pounds. What have you got for me? What sort of bike are you looking for? Racing bike? Uh, preferably bike? a road bike. Weight doesn't really matter. Road tires would be good. Okay. Drop handlebars. Preferably good brakes and good gears. Okay. That's, pro that's probably a little bit too small, this one. The only one to go, which will uh, do the challenge. Looks in good, Nick. Oh, and we've got the brakes under the handlebars. Yeah. I think I'll take that. Think, Can you do it for £100? Yeah, go on, of course. Deal. I got the bike home, gave it a once over, made sure everything was ready for its epic journey. So this is my beautiful Triumph Tempest. Now, not much fits me, but the cranks do. They're 165. It doesn't have a gold chain, but check out these brakes. These are Wyman Dyer Comp, and they're pretty snazzy. I'm used to riding 11 speed, but this has got six speed, so this will be very interesting up the Yorkshire climbs. A fully steel frame with down tube shifters, which will be interesting too, seeming as I've never used them before. I've managed to change my pedals and saddles, so that's gonna make the riding a lot more comfortable. The riding flats and a very uncomfortable saddle for 100 miles. It weighs a ton, trust me, probably more than me. But overall, I am happy with my bike and I reckon John Cannings would approve. Now I'm gonna be honest. I've never actually ridden 100 miles on my own in training. I've only ever done it in racing. So riding 100 miles on any kind of bike is gonna be a challenge. So I've really put myself in the deep end at doing it on a 100 pound bike. So I uh, guess we better get cracking. So it's the night before my big challenge and it is 10 to 10, so I need to get to bed soon. But I've managed to do my route. It is exactly 100 miles and I've got 6,000 meters of climbing. So I've made it on the computer, downloaded it to my phone and downloaded to my Wahoo. So all set for the morning. And I actually have to get up at 5.15. Don't ask why. So I better get to bed. So it's currently 5.25 in the morning. And I'm on my way to the start. I'm starting at Higo Tor, and that's my start and finish point. And hopefully we're gonna see a sunrise. As I said, it's nearly half past five in the morning. There's not many places open for breakfast, so I've got last night's pizza. I'll have pizza for breakfast any day of the week. My route starts and finishes in Higa Tor, in the heart of the Peak District. It heads east towards Manchester, passing Glossop, Wilmslow, Nutsford, Buxton, and finally back to my start point. A hundred miles covering just over 7,000 feet of climbing. This would be a challenge for me on a superbike, let alone my cheap bike. So I've made it to my start and finish point, Higor Tor here in the Peak District, and it was definitely worth getting up so early for this beautiful view. I've got my Wahoo head unit on because after all, I'm gonna need to know where I'm going for this 100 miles. Um, so all I need to do is pump my tires up, make sure my wheels are in properly, and I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little bit worried about descending on this bad boy because the brakes aren't the best. All right, let's get going.
So I'm lucky enough to have a camera crew and a sport vehicle with me today so you guys can come along with me. Haven't got any bottle cages on this bike so I'm gonna have to get bottles from the car and hopefully we'll be stopping for breakfast soon because I am starving. Right, better get going. Oh, that's not too bad. So first impressions of the bike, I can definitely feel it's pretty heavy up the hills. The brakes aren't as bad as I thought as long as I start braking quite a bit earlier than I want to. And the gears are quite smooth, quite surprised. Oh, wrong way. Oh. oh gosh, I have not got enough gears for this climb. I keep going to change the gears on the levers, but I have to remember they're on the down tube, so that's going to take a bit of getting used to too. After tackling the first 20 kilometres of rolling hills down from Higator, it was time to hit the open roads towards Manchester. It's quite comfy though. I feel like I can get quite aero. Probably wouldn't stay like this for 100 miles. difference between my super bike and this bike is definitely the weight that's the first thing that comes to my mind and again the gears it's a bit of a faff to change gears not very responsive at all you have to think about it you have to put your hand and it's a little bit dangerous when you're you know going quite quick and descending you want to just you know click down the gears all the way to the down tube I'm only 30k in I might be you know a little bit excited and not feeling any discomforts right now, but I might be saying something else in the back end of the ride. <laughs> Look steep. Have we got any gears left? Uh, nope, that's it. Just grind away. Super bike or a hundred pound bike, the view is still incredible and I'm still enjoying it at the moment. For now, anyway. <laughs> now I'm gonna take it steady and careful on the descents because the brakes are not the best, trust me. But good job, I've got these on the tops so I can brake because I can't quite get enough brake and they're a bit a bit stiff. So I'm an hour and a half in. I've done 47k, averaged 29 kilometers per hour. The road's been really nice so far, quite rolling, hit a few little hills. Nothing major yet, but got that all to look forward to on the way back. I am a little bit worried that I'm in my easiest gear already and it feels quite hard and this is hardly even a hill. And I've got some really big hills on the way back. I'm actually sure I'm gonna make it up this climb. 12%, oh gosh, it gets steeper. So basically I didn't change down to my little ring soon enough and tried to change mid hill and it just wasn't having anything so I had to actually stop. Maybe go down, bit of an easy gear, bit of a steep climb. Little oh, girl. Made it to the top just about. 
Could do a little nap, to be fair. <laughs> okay, so I'm 60 kilometers in and it's only eight o'clock. Just heard this massive bang on that descent. It was quite dodgy. And I've had a blowout and I've got a bit of, I'm not actually sure what that is, sticking out my tire. And that really doesn't look very good. Not sure what I'm gonna do about this. We're coming up to a little village, uh, hopefully find a nice little cafe to have some breakfast and wait until the bike shop opens. It was all going so well. So made it to breakfast slightly ahead of schedule, but got a few hours to kill before a bike shop opens. So let's go get some breakfast. So filled up on breakfast, nice and fueled. We found a vintage bike shop that's five miles away and I'm really hoping that they have the right tire size. So let's head there. So we're in luck, they've got some tires and they're even fitting it for me. So we've managed to get two new tyres on the bike, so it's ready to go. And big thank you to Brian at Classic and Vintage Cycles for sorting this out. Do you think uh, it's a good deal for £100? I think it's absolutely fantastic. That's yeah, what I like to maybe a bit less oil on the chain. Oh. Just, you know, to save the Yeah, yeah, it does, does look a bit oily. <laughs> got my new tyres on. Got around 100 kilometres still to go. It's pretty flat now for 50, 60k before we hit some real nice big hills to finish it off, so. I better get going. So I've got around 70 kilometers left. I'm definitely feeling the effects of the bike. It's, you know, when you're starting to get tired, your legs are tired and then you've got this extra weight of this really heavy bike and then I'm starting to get a little bit lazy and not turning the gears because it's quite a bit of effort so I'm just grinding and it's making my legs hurt even more but it doesn't help that it's 30 degrees today so even though it looks really nice it's really sunny the heat does affect me quite a bit so I'm starting to suffer so we've just hit the bottom of one of the big climbs, Cat and Fiddle, and I'm just getting ready to get up it, getting some sugar in me, and I've sat in the car with the aircon blasting to keep me cool because it is, it's 30 degrees and I'm not used to this weather. So it's a bit of a shock, it's taken it out of me, but getting ready for all the climbing. The bike's holding in there, but on the climbs it is just horrible. It's just like a proper slug. It just has not been built for, for climbing with the gears and it's so heavy. So it's going to be fun. It's now time for my least favourite part, all the climbing. The last leg, uphill home. Oh God, my legs! <sighs> Due to lots of traffic on the busier roads, we couldn't safely use the car to film this brutal climb. Trust me, it hurt. And I went very slowly. <sighs> Gosh. So I'm on to the last bit now. 15k to go, and you guessed it, it's all uphill. A lot of uphill. And the bike, well, had no more mechanicals so far. Tire hasn't blown out again, but it is just so heavy and chunky. And when you get up the saddle up the hills, you just, you go backwards. Well, I go backwards anyway. Not sure if that's my legs. Oh. know if I like the downhills because I get scared of the brakes I'm not sure what's worse uphill or downhill <laughs> sounds like a musical instrument <laughs> gonna have nightmares of these brakes and the noise 
just went down a really steep descent and my brakes were on full the whole time and my fingers are so sore they're numb and uh, yeah I was very cautious and didn't have much faith in stopping with these brakes so yeah need to remember to change gear before I stop because I'll never get going This is a fake smile. I'm dying inside. Because we've got more hills up there. <laughs> Just about to hit the last time of the day. And I'm already in my easiest gear. And it gets a lot steeper. Pray for me. Oh, hi Karumba, that's a mountain. Come on, little guy, we can do this. Bike's creaking a bit. I can't even blame anyone else because I planned this route. Jenny, oh. not sure I'm going to get up. So I can see the starting point where we started this morning, just up there. I mean, it looks quite far away right now, but it's in touch and distance. We can do it, little guy, come on. My legs are like they're going so slow. To the top of the last climb. My finishing point, just over there. And my legs are burning. Oh. I am so glad to be at the finish. A hundred miles later, where I started and I mean, that climb didn't do me any favors, but we made it. I'm never gonna take my super bike for granted again. Having gears that work, brakes that work, just like a lightweight bike that is gonna help me up the hills. But I have to say it was still a good day, good day out on the bike. So some stats for you from my Wahoo. I did 160 kilometers in just over seven hours. It's my longest ride yet, and there was a lot of climbing. 2,500 meters of climbing, and my max heart rate reached 192 beats per minute. Now, that's a big old day on the bike, and, and the average temperature was 30 degrees, and I did start at half five in the morning. That was definitely my hardest challenge yet.